We got some trends that don't go out of style and just sit tight, you might be here a while. I'm talking about ionization energies, atomic radius and electronegativities. For real, we got some crazy properties and they all determine chemical activities. That's right, today we're talking about periodic trends. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So Fu, today we're gonna talk about how different properties change going across the periodic table. True story, bro. Let's get started. Periodic trends, a lesson from the periodic table unit. What is a periodic trend? Well, we can't do that unless you get your periodic tables out. Get your periodic tables out! Periodic trends show how the properties of elements change either across a period or down a group. These usually follow some sort of pattern. So for example, if you look down a group, the atomic number increases. If you look across a period, the number of electrons increases. You try number one. State a trend that occurs going down a group and state a trend that occurs going across a period. Don't use one of the examples from the previous slide. We're gonna define three terms and then later look at the trends they exhibit on the periodic table. Now, these three terms are so important, they come up in later units. In fact, we're really devoting this entire lesson to these three properties, so make sure you understand them. Number one, electronegativity, which has no units. The attraction a nucleus has for its electrons in a chemical bond. And we'll deal with the chemical bond stuff later, but that is a part of its official definition. So remember that opposites attract. We've got in our illustration, positive protons attracting those negative electrons. And that's really the basis for what electronegativity is. First ionization energy in kilojoules per mole. The amount of energy needed to remove the most loosely held electron from an atom. It's a valence electron. The most loosely held electron is the valence electron. It's the electron in the outermost shell, the one that is the farthest from the nucleus. Now, it is still held by that nucleus because the nucleus attracts its electrons. Because it's still held, it's gonna require some energy not necessarily a lot of energy because it's the most loosely held. For this reason, we call it the first ionization energy. Atomic radius measured in picometers. The size of an atom as measured from nucleus to outer energy level. So just like the radius of a circle is from the center to the actual line of the circle, the center of an atom is the nucleus, and the outermost part of any atom is always the valence electrons. So the atomic radius is just the distance from the nucleus to those valence electrons. The official trends going down a group. So we're gonna take some uh, atomic structure into consideration here when we talk about our trends in a group. The first of which is the number of energy levels increases as you go down a group. The number of core electrons also increases as you go down a group. We call these shielding electrons. And the valence electrons are farther from the nucleus. So based on these atomic structure considerations, the attractions between the nucleus and the valence electron decrease. We're gonna examine what happens as we proceed down a group. We're gonna start out with the element hydrogen in group one, which has one proton and one electron. If you notice, we're in the first energy level, there's no shielding electrons, and the electron's pretty close to the nucleus. So we would say that we have a relatively strong attraction between the nucleus and outermost electrons. As we go down group one, we jump to element three, lithium. So now we have three protons in the nucleus. We finish filling our first energy level with two electrons, and we put our third in the second energy level. Now look at what happened in terms of the differences. We now have an extra principal energy level, or PEL, we now have shielding electrons, electrons sort of in between that are blocking the attraction of the nucleus. And look, there's also a greater distance between valence electrons and the protons. So now we have a relatively low attraction between nucleus and valence electrons. So considering any group, the electronegativity decreases since there are weaker attractions. The first ionization energy also decreases since less energy is needed to remove an electron 
therefore it's easier to remove an electron, the atomic radius increases since there are more energy levels. Notice how the electronegativity and first ionization energies always follow the same trend, whereas the atomic radius follows the opposite trend. Let's revisit hydrogen and lithium. Going from hydrogen to lithium, we can see that our attractions went down. So by definition, our electronegativity has to go down. Looking at first ionization energy, because this is more weakly held, boop, it doesn't take a lot of energy to remove. It's very easy to remove. That's a lower first ionization energy. And of course, because we have an extra energy level, our atomic radius has also increased. All right, so we're gonna do an example here. Shu, are you ready? I am. All right, which has the higher electronegativity, sodium or potassium? We're gonna explain our answer in terms of atomic structure. All right, so first thing we wanna do is look up these two elements on our periodic table. All right, so I'm looking for sodium, which is Na, and also potassium, which is K. Looks like they're in group one. All right, so what we want to take note of here are both of their electron configurations. Okay, so Na is 281 and K is 2881. All right, so we're going to go back to our example page and write that down. All right, so we had Na was 281 again and K was 2881. All right, so we want to think about our trends in terms of structure, right? Okay. So let's talk about the number of energy levels. Let's compare their energy levels. All right, so it looks like, just based on the electron configuration, K is 2881. It's got four energy levels versus Na having three, so we could say that K has more, can I abbreviate, PELs for principal energy levels. Perfect. All right, so K has more PELs. Okay, so then which one of the two has more core electrons or shielding electrons? Oh, so those electrons kind of get in the way. Well, it looks like K has more electrons, just there being more shells, there's more electrons sort of in between. So we'd say K has more shielding electrons as well. Good. And let's then discuss the distance from the nucleus to those valence electrons. Well, again, going along with more energy levels, I think K would have electrons that are farther away, right? Good. So K has electrons that are farther from the nucleus. All right, and let's tie all that structure together with attractions, right? So what's attracting and what's going on between these two? All right, so the nucleus attracts the electrons. We just said that uh, K has more energy levels, there's more shielding, electrons are farther away, so I think that's gonna lead to weaker attractions between the two, right? That's good, yep. All right, so K has weaker attractions. Um, I've done a lot of work, but I still haven't actually answered the question yet, have I? No, nope, but I think we have everything we need to answer that question. So what is electronegativity? All right, so electronegativity has to do with the attractions between the nucleus and electrons. We kind of just talked about that. Good, so let's get an answer down here in terms of atomic structure. All right, so we're looking for the higher electronegativity, right? So even though I kept talking about K throughout my answer, I established that K has weaker attractions. So it's actually gonna be Na that actually has the higher electronegativity. I'll abbreviate that En. Na has a higher electronegativity, and that's going to be due to it having fewer energy levels, fewer shielding electrons, electrons closer to the nucleus, and stronger attractions. Sounds good. You try number two. Which has a smaller atomic radius, sulfur or selenium? Explain in terms of atomic structure. Continuing on with the official trends, now we're gonna go across a period. We're gonna look at atomic structure again. This time, the PEL or principal energy level being filled with electrons stays the same. Also, the number of core electrons or shielding electrons stays the same. But the atomic number, which we can also call nuclear charge, increases. So the attraction between the nucleus and the valence electron increase. We're gonna take a look at a period trend now. We're gonna look at lithium and beryllium in period two. So we already have lithium here. As we go to beryllium, we have one more proton and one more electron. Notice though, we are filling up the same PEL or energy level. Also in between, we have the same number of shielding or core electrons. The thing that matters that changed though is that the atomic number or nuclear charge went up. There's now more pulling these electrons inward. 
and that's what makes the attractions increase. The electronegativity increases since there are stronger attractions. The first ionization energy increases since more energy is needed to remove an electron. It's harder to remove. And the atomic radius decreases since the same energy level is being filled, but greater attractions are pulling the electrons inward. So a nice way to remember this within a group is to think of a snowman, right? So if you take a look at the first group here, we've got all of them getting progressively larger as we go down. And if we look at a period, that snowman falling over is a good way to remember the trend for atomic radius in a period. Returning again to our period trend with lithium and beryllium, as we went from lithium to beryllium, we saw this happen. Now, again, we've got the same energy level we filled, same core electrons, greater nuclear charge. This made the attractions go up. So that's going to lead to, by definition, an increase in electronegativity. And also, there's going to be an increase in the first ionization energy. This is a really strong pull, so... Uh, uh, Oh, it took a lot of energy to remove that valence electron. That's a higher first ionization energy. Now, in terms of radius, some students think that the radius stays the same because I'm filling up the same energy level. But if you think about it with this greater pull to the center like a magnet, that's actually going to cause these electrons to be pulled slightly closer to the nucleus and the atomic radius is actually going to decrease. Let's take a look at another example. You ready, Fu? I am. Okay, which has the higher first ionization energy, aluminum or silicon? Explain in terms of atomic structure. All right, so why don't we take a look at our periodic table first? Okay. Let's find Al and Si. All right, I see that they are right there in the same period. Same period, all right. Let's note the electron configurations again. All right, so aluminum is 283 and silicon is 284. All right, let's go back to our previous slide and write that down. Two, eight, four. All right, we wanna look at atomic structure. Let's start with energy levels. How do the number of PELs compare between the two? They both have three, so they're both the same. Yeah, that stays the same, good thing to know. And let's take a look at the number of core or shielding electrons. So the core ones are the non-valence electrons. They both have the same, two eight. So same shielding too. Also the same. Now you may notice that the number of electrons in that last shell is different, but we really don't want to focus on that factor. We want to focus on the atomic number or nuclear charge, thinking of attractions being pulled to the center. Okay. So how do we compare the atomic numbers of aluminum and silicon? All right, so the atomic number, according to my periodic table, of aluminum was 13, so it has 13 protons. Good. And silicon has 14 protons. All right, good. So let's note that. Um, all right, so silicon has a stronger nuclear charge, so it has 14 protons. Very good. And we can essentially ignore the same PEL, same core electrons. They're not really something that's affecting our attractions, but what you just wrote that SI has a stronger nuclear charge does. So what would you say about the attractions between the nucleus and electrons in SI? Well, since it has more protons and a stronger nuclear charge, it's kind of like a stronger magnet, right? Very so good, it's got yes. a stronger pull for those electrons. Yeah, good way of saying it. So let's note that SI has stronger attractions for its electrons. And now we want to kind of pull everything together and we got to kind of go back to the original question. We're looking for the higher first ionization energy. So I'm going to let you go on this All one. right. So first ionization energy is the energy required to remove an electron. Yes. OK. So silicon has more protons and has a stronger nuclear charge. That was really the only difference, right? Yeah. So if it has a stronger pull on its electrons, it's kind of holding them well, right? Yes. So if it's holding them kind of strong, or at least stronger than aluminum, it must be more difficult to remove one, right? So if I was holding onto this pencil, it'd be tougher to remove it if I was holding onto it tighter. Right, right yes. So the ionization under the first ionization, it must be higher in silicon because of that. Exactly, good. Okay, so let's get that down then. So silicon, I'm going to write IE for ionization energy. Good abbreviation there. Uh, than aluminum. 
Uh, can I just say because it has a stronger nuclear charge? And stronger tractions, yeah, sounds or stronger good. Stronger tractions, okay. You try number three. Which has a larger atomic radius, lithium or beryllium? Explain in terms of atomic structure. So here we have a great image that kind of summarizes everything we've just discussed. So if we take a look at the arrow that's pointing down, talking about the trends within a group, atomic radius will increase going down the group, ionization energy and electronegativity will both decrease going down the group. Going across from left to right, we see the trends at a period, atomic radius will decrease, and ionization energy and electronegativity will both increase. That's gonna do it for today's episode on periodic trends. Later, nerds. Special promotional consideration provided by... Tired of purchasing those expensive Bluetooth headsets that just don't quite fit? Or having people mistakenly think you're talking to them? Introducing hands-free cell phone kit. One size fits all. But we never off, or we zone to the break of dawn. S E I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.